Where is Al-Aqsa Mosque? You've probably seen this beautiful octagonal building with a golden dome in various media. If someone asks you the name of this building, you'd likely say either Jerusalem or Al-Aqsa Mosque without hesitation. Muslims always do. People often talk about Al-Aqsa Mosque and liberating it from Jewish occupation. They enthusiastically recount the story of the Prophet of Islam's ascension from this mosque to the heavens. However, in reality, among the roughly one and a half billion Muslims worldwide, very few actually know the true name of this building. Among those who don't know the name of this building, you'd find highly educated individuals, including some ministers, members of parliament, journalists, media executives, and even high-ranking military officials. Take a look at this banknote. This is an old 1,000 rial note, or the old 100 Toman bill, which has an image of Al-Aqsa Mosque printed on its back. The design of images on a country's currency is typically done by highly skilled and knowledgeable individuals. This is because these images often incorporate symbols that represent important aspects of the country's culture and history. Example 2. Recently in Afghanistan, which is under Taliban control, a mosque has been built as a memorial to Mullah Omar Mujahid, one of the leaders and founders of the Taliban government. This mosque, modeled after the Al-Aqsa Mosque, is called the Mullah Omar Mujahid Mosque. As you can see in the image, the Mullah Omar Mujahid Mosque and the mosque depicted on the 1000 real note have an identical appearance. The builders apparently intended for this structure to resemble the Al-Aqsa Mosque. What's the name of this building with the Golden Dome? It's this beautiful octagonal structure with a Golden Dome. It's built on the Mount of Olives, specifically on top of a large rock at the peak of the mountain. The name of this building in Arabic is Qubat al-Sakra, and in English it's known as the Dome of the Rock. This mosque and its dome were constructed by the Umayyad Caliph Abd al-Malik Marwan, drawing inspiration from Byzantine church architecture. He began the construction in 66 AH, 685 AD, and completed it in 72 AH, 691 AD, taking six years to finish. Abd al-Malik Marwan could be considered one of the most moderate caliphs in Islamic history. The construction of this mosque began during Ibn al-Zubayr's rebellion and his conquest of Mecca. This created problems for pilgrims traveling for Hajj. People under his rule would circumambulate this mosque and perform Hajj rituals here instead of at the Kaaba, which was under Ibn al-Zubayr's control. Knowing this, an important question comes to mind. If this isn't Al-Aqsa Mosque, then from where did the Prophet of Islam ascend for Miraj? Moreover, this mosque was built 56 years after the Prophet's death, so it can't be the Al-Aqsa Mosque we're referring to. So, where is the real Al-Aqsa Mosque? Now that we understand this, the Al-Aqsa Mosque isn't the one with the Golden Dome. 
we need to look for it elsewhere. In this large courtyard, which Jews called the Temple Mount, there's a mosque on the southern side behind the Dome of the Rock. It has a small silver dome, and that's the actual Al-Aqsa Mosque. The Al-Aqsa Mosque is located next to the Western Wall. It was built there. If you look closely at these images, you'll notice that the Al-Aqsa Mosque isn't as visually striking or appealing compared to the Dome of the Rock Mosque with its golden dome and beautiful architecture. For this reason, Muslims who are aware of the difference between the two often introduce the Dome of the Rock as the Al-Aqsa Mosque. According to Muslim historians and Hadith scholars, the Prophet of Islam first went to the Al-Aqsa Mosque before his night journey and ascension to the seven heavens. There's no doubt that Islamic historians, Hadith scholars, and religious experts have recounted the story of the ascension with great detail and enthusiasm. However, the real bombshell here is the historical context. It's important to note that the Al-Aqsa Mosque was actually built by Abd al-Malik Marwan and later by his son Walid bin Abd al-Malik in 86 AH, which is 76 years after the death of the Prophet Muhammad. This raises the question, how could the Prophet have visited a mosque that wasn't built until 76 years after his death? This is something that Islamic authorities need to explain to us to counter the deception and falsehood spread by religious leaders we must clarify that before these two structures were built there were no buildings on this site everything that existed there including solomon's palace and other smaller buildings had been destroyed and burned by the roman army in the early years of the christian era What do the Shiites say about the Al-Aqsa Mosque? Now we've reached the most intriguing part of the Al-Aqsa Mosque story. As we all know, the occupying and usurping clerical regime, which has held our homeland and our compatriots hostage for 45 years, cries more for the Al-Aqsa Mosque than any grieving mother in this world. Cursed with a depressed and distressed population, a weak and ailing economy, and leaders who have sunk neck deep into corruption, most Jews and their scriptures believe that a place called Al-Aqsa Mosque doesn't exist on earth, but rather in the fourth heaven, in a location known as Bayt Al-Mamur. This belief of the Jews regarding the Al-Aqsa Mosque is exactly the same as what Shiite scholars have written about it. In other words, Shiites, like Jews, believe that the Al-Aqsa Mosque is the name of a place in the heavens. To keep this video brief, I'll present just a few examples of the sayings and writings of prominent Shiite scholars and commentators on this subject. An important question that remains unanswered is why, in Shiite beliefs, there is a place called question that seems to have no clear answer is this. If in Shiite beliefs there's no physical place on earth called Al-Aqsa Mosque, then why is the occupying regime of the Mullahs spending billions of dollars?
What goal are they trying to achieve? Or is this just a staged conflict between Jewish Zionists in Israel and the turban Zionists in Iran working towards a shared objective? The judgment is yours to make.